Uh, we are joined by uh, Major Mohammad Ali Shah on the broadcast. Uh, Major Shah, good morning to you. And uh, obviously, it's a uh, good news uh, for uh, uh, the U.S. passport holders, those who are still uh, stuck in Afghanistan. Taliban actually facilitating. Do you think it's an image-building exercise that Taliban is into right now? See, a uh, player from the U.S. He has mentioned the chief of the Joint Staff Committee. He has mentioned that Taliban has been giving safe passage to uh, American citizens, the U.S. passport holders. Mm -hmm. It's a good sign. Definitely, it's a very, very good sign. And make hay while the sun shines. I think right. The, the, uh, the sooner the better they evacuate from there, the better because actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. So right now, people will judge Taliban as per the last previous actions, which was like, for example, 27 September 1996, mm -hmm. they hung the president, uh, Mullah, on a lamppost, dragging him out from a UN office from where he had taken shelter right. in broad daylight. So actions speak out in words. Their barbarism, their inhumanity has gone to such an extent that people are actually flying out from aircraft. Now, if you see is it an image building exercise, I feel they have a very good PR machinery, yes. But if they have such a good PR machinery, where were the, where were the communication channels when three, four days back people were trying to leave Kabul and they were trying to cling on to the aircraft? What happened to the communication channel then? Because if you say it's a bloodless, bloodless shift, bloodless coup, mm -hmm. bloodless, not just about not firing weapons or bullets from the AK-47, bloodless can be really lost. Three lives on the aircraft. We lost some lives at the front. They were trying to jump from the wall of the airport as well. So bloodless means where there is no commotion completely, where even if someone does not die in a stampede for that matter. So mm -hmm. let's wait and watch what their further action would be. But I would still be skeptical of them mm -hmm. that we should not trust them too soon. It's just been four days and it's too early to judge whether the Taliban or the reformed Taliban, they certainly are softer in terms of their craftsmanship as a warrior is concerned because they've got used to, from coming out from cave, they've got used to AC houses, luxury cars, mobile phones, technology, good clothing, education. And when we talk about Amrullah Saleh still being there and saying that I am the president now, and mm. we have uh, Morana brother saying that he, he hasn't said, but he is speculated to be. But I also presume that probably Taliban this time will try to get somebody more educated and on the younger side perhaps because mm -hmm. they definitely are on an image building exercise. They want to change the stigma that they had of terrorists but still too early to comment, still too early. Let's wait and exactly watch what their actions further are going to be. Right, absolutely. And also, uh, well, uh, talking about uh, their uh, change the stance as of now, as far as the women uh, of Afghanistan are concerned, then also they have uh, come up with some sort of leniency into their approach uh, as compared to the last time. You know, women in Afghanistan, they took up arms against Taliban. They formed their own force and they have taken up arms against them. So certainly, they what they need a clarification that they went to a hospital in fact and they spoke to the lady doctor over there. They told them, we have nothing to fear, we are here and we are proud of you. You are the daughter of the soil and you continue doing your work. Nobody will harm you. They try to instill that confidence, but okay, fine, they came, yes, it's a good sign, but within the Sharia law again, which is okay, nothing to worry about as per se as such, which is made much of it, but I would still say the fear about what we were seeing at the Kabul airport about three, four days back, was the fear of the unknown, they had no idea what Taliban is going to be, and such is their reputation, you can imagine, just by the reputation, they have not fired upon anyone at that time, they have not butchered anybody, they, if they wanted, they could have butchered people, but such was the reputation that the terror was there. People in Afghanistan apparently, they were children, their mothers tell them, go to sleep, otherwise the Taliban will come. That is the kind of reputation that Taliban has been having all this while. So now they mm -hmm. can watch whether they really succeed in the image building, but they will have to work really, really hard to gain legitimacy. Because so far they only got legitimacy from China, from Pakistan. But if they want to win over hearts and minds and get this, basically they'll have to work very hard and be a completely different Taliban that we look up to Taliban, but which I am still saying I'm very skeptical about because I want to just sit and wait and watch what the action would be. Actually. Control, do you think that uh, the sun has set on Ashraf Ghani? 
No, yes, absolutely. Since Taliban in full control, the sun, the sun has set on Ashraf Ghani. Mm-hmm. In fact, Abdullah Saleh uh, had come forward and he said that now from uh, Vice President, I am going to be the President. In fact, mm-hmm. I am so sorry, I think I missed, I took the name earlier before. I met Abdullah Saleh who had mm-hmm. come forward and said that now I am going to be the President. Yes, yeah. So now, when Ashraf Ghani, the sun has set on him, so it really means the Taliban is going to come forward there in full swing and there has to be a channel of communication, any kind of channel of communication just to be open otherwise. And yes, he's right in a way that he would have met the same same feat that uh, uh, Dr. Mohammad Dalibullah met on 27 September 1996. But having said that, I also somewhere presume, feel that you know, it is also that he also went to save his own life. Otherwise the army was there, the military was there under him which did not fire a single bullet to protect him for that matter. And UAE, I think it's been very, very regardless of him for that matter, of them for that matter, to have issued him, to have welcomed him as a Saudi imaginary ground for this that he had won. Because like, you know, Najibullah, uh, he was not even 50 when he was hung. It was, I mean, imagine a man in his 40s being hung in public broad daylight on a lamppost. Dreadful. Mm. What a message Taliban sent across the world. So yes, that fear factor of certainly must have been there in Ashraf Ghani, but certainly now Ashraf Ghani, I think it's history now. It's going to be unfortunately, unfortunately, I feel my heart goes out in fact, which is going to be Taliban and let's hope and pray that they are going to be sticking to their words as they are taking right now. And people are presuming there are two Taliban. One is, which is putting up a face over there, one is the real Taliban, which was of 20 years back. But let's we didn't actually watch and let's... Uh, Give them a chance, but still, I would say I'm still skeptical of it. Mm-hmm. But being skeptical, let's wait and watch. Let's see, okay, if they really stick by their words or not. And yes, some has been set on a Uh I'll take uh, one final question with Major Shah and then we'll move on. Major Shah, uh, well, it looks like. Uh, you know, it's a give and take situation here, but uh, United States on one hand, while it is allocating money for uh, the rehabilitation of the refugees and uh, are in, fav- in return it is getting a, a clear exit route for its uh, nationals uh, to leave Afghanistan, it looks like the uh, U.S. already has blocked uh, an access uh, to $9.5 billion to Afghanistan monetary reserves also, and this I think would be a deadly blow. Uh, to already cash-strapped uh, uh, country as of now. Do you think that uh, somehow U.S. is also trying to choke Afghanistan, uh, choke the Taliban uh, as far as the monetary reserves is concerned? Uh, yes, as rightly brought out by you, most certainly, because mm-hmm. U.S. has got other ways and means apart from just positioning there on ground. For example, choking them in the funds. Mm-hmm. They can even uh, release the air support, their drones, their missiles. They can actually... Still, they haven't lost, I would not say that they have lost complete control of Afghanistan as uh, the uh, uh, no, the US has been saying repeatedly. Mm-hmm. It's not a complete failure, they say. But let's let's see at how Taliban function and if they would be able to function without funds. And who is funding them? That's another a good question. Because most of these Taliban for 20 years, most of them are who? They were either welders or they were farmers or they were laborers. They were small time. You can see in the videos that they have been emerging, apart from the leadership, their foot soldiers per se, they have mm-hmm. never seen uh, proper structured houses, gymnasiums or amusement parks. So the way, by their behavior, you can make out how they are like really not used to seeing such things. It is like I mean, a small analogy, you know, a small child, he used to go to a village, an ancestral village, and small children around the neighborhood, they, would, uh, they have never seen a car in their life, poor thing. So they would all assemble and run around and come behind the car, cheering, you know, the cars come into the village. Same mm-hmm. with that's exactly I can relate to these people from Afghanistan, the foot soldiers especially. The leadership is going to, they have been communicating with the UN, they have been, they have kept the channels of communication open and uh, they have, they are the educated lot. I'll give us for example, there is one officer who was trained at the Indian Military Academy who it has joined Taliban now, who is part of Taliban. Mm-hmm. It, it, I think it's rather disgraceful, it's rather shameful. But let's hope and watch what their actions again mm-hmm. are going to be like. 